Is inflation a quiet form of theft? Is gold actually going up? Or is it really broadcasting the weakness of the dollar? If so, what can we do about it? How can investments in scarce assets like gold and silver or decentralized assets like Bitcoin be used to counterbalance this constant erosion of our savings and purchasing power? When weighing the cost of living, inflation, fluctuating interest rates, and the ever-growing national debt, it becomes more and more challenging to know if you are meeting your retirement goals. If you think you may be falling behind, see the link in the video description to access the free inflation retirement calculator to make sure that you are on track. Also, be sure to stay until the end of the video where we will give you two wise investment options each with their own set of advantages to discuss why gold works why fiat currencies ultimately fail and why gold and other scarce assets act as an insurance policy against risk we will hear from former congressman author and activist ron paul economist white house advisor and author jim rickards economist and investor keith weiner and former congressman and activist mark fincham when this Morgan silver dollar was minted by the U.S. government, it was a dollar, one dollar. Today, this same coin is equal to twenty dollars. And I think that we have all since childhood heard about the idea of inflation. What the IRS has figured out at the federal level is how to tax inflation as a gain. They call it capital gains because they want to say that you buy this with this. The truth couldn't be any further than away from that position. This is an exchange of one type of currency for another. Actually, it's a conversion of one type of currency for another because of a lack of trust. So when they pass a series of laws, we'll broadly call them the legal tender laws, we are forced to use their debt as if it were money. So think about that. What we call money is a dollar. It says Federal Reserve note on the dollar bill, bill being an old word for credit and note being a word for credit promissory note. We're using their debt as if it were money. Now, FDR did this in 1933 when he made gold illegal to possess, as in criminal as in go to prison for possessing gold the way, the way it is for cocaine today. When he made it illegal for people to possess gold, that forces people to treat the government bond as if that was a conservative risk-free asset. In fact, if you ask any regulated financial professional today, what's the risk-free asset? They'll say the government bond. And so it forces everybody to turn to the government and, and become a lender to government as if that was a risk-free proposition. And of course, uh, I think it's probably pretty well known that the Federal Reserve, right on their website, says that their stated policy target is 2% debasement per annum. So you're forced to save in this, in this paper, and they have a monetary policy of stealing 2% per year. And so I, I call it immoral because, first of all, you have no right to force people to use something. And secondly, if you do force them to use something, you have no further right to then try to rob them at 2% per year. There's been this quiet theft going on over time. You'll notice the document that has a house, has eggs, has hard money, and then has fiat currency. I find it interesting that in 1957, a 1,600 square foot house would cost roughly the equivalent of 37,700 eggs, which would be 13,500 silver dollars, which in that day would have been 13,500 silver certificates. Now today we move forward to, and this is just 2007 because this is when this was prepared, a six, that same house would still cost the equivalent of 37, thousand seven hundred eggs and it would still be roughly thirteen thousand five hundred silver dollars however in federal reserve notes it would be one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that's called inflation so when somebody takes that thirteen thousand five hundred dollars in silver dollars and exchanges them for federal reserve notes the irs says that that's a taxable event of course from 1933 to 1975 it was illegal for americans to own gold it was like drugs or Finally, in 1975, the Ford administration repealed that so Americans could own gold. So in 1980, when Ronald Reagan ran for president, and it wasn't that long that we had been off the gold standard. It was 71, so we were only talking nine years later. Uh, there was a lot of momentum in the Reagan conservative camp to go back to the gold standard. So what, the, what Reagan did as a candidate, he does what politicians always do. He said, well, we'll have a commission to study it. So they did appoint a gold commission in, in 1981. However, the commission was divided, and as is often the case, the minority was allowed to file a minority report. Now, the minority was Lou Lehrman, Ron Paul, you know, some very interesting gold advocates. So they filed a minority report to this gold commission saying we should go back on the gold standard. Well, this is a public record. So uh, some publisher, an enterprising publisher, took the minority report and published it as a book called The Case for Gold. But there are new arguments in favor of gold that are 21st century arguments, simply were not part of the debate 
in the 1980s and the 1990s. And, and first and foremost is the fact, so you talk to these billionaires, they go, oh, I'm, I'm rich, whatever, I really, what do you have? Like, I got stocks, bonds, all this stuff. I say, no, you don't. You have electrons. This is all digital wealth. We, you get reports, you know, from your broker, yeah. probably online, you know, you pay your bills online, you get paid online, etc. This is digital wealth. Vladimir Putin has a 6,000 member cyber brigade working 24 hours a day to hack and disrupt and erase the financial system of the United States. Now, he, I'm not saying he's going to do it tomorrow morning, and there's a deterrent aspect to it, you know, it's like, it's like a mutual short destruction. <laughs> I call it mutual short financial destruction. But if you have digital wealth and you wake up one day and it's all gone, don't be surprised. That's my only point. So you need some tangible wealth. That obviously gold, I would say number one. It's not the only tangible asset. It's silver, land, real estate, fine art. There's a list of, uh, of tangible wealth, and not all in. You know, I kind of recommend 10% gold. But so there are there are new arguments to put on the table side by side with all the old arguments that we're all uh, familiar with. Gold and silver is money. Money is different than stocks and, and bonds. And money's been different. You shouldn't have to tax money. And actually paper, Federal Reserve is not money. It's a substitute for money and it's fraud. What, what's happening, it's a hidden hidden tax. This, this is the reason the monetary issue is so important to me because ultimately, if you wanna protect liberty and the size of government, you have to have honest money. Gold holds a proven, time-tested track record as an economic constant that spans millennia. Why is it important to have an economic constant? What is the main question every person planning their retirement or building a business needs to ask themselves? Are we growing wealth or losing wealth? And how do we measure this? Gold is that tool. With a 5,000-year record that has withstood every economic business cycle, stock market booms and busts, global conflicts, and outlasting every faith-based fiat currency, gold is no one's liability. It builds wealth while preserving it. Owning physical gold and precious metals requires responsible sourcing of grades, purity, condition, the best prices, transparency, and most of all, security and storage. Gold IRAs are tax-deferred means of owning physical gold and ensuring all these investing principles are met. We have reviewed and vetted the best gold IRA companies that meet all these requirements. See the link in the video description to access the free gold investment guides. An often used criticism for holding gold is the opportunity cost of gaining yields elsewhere, such as bonds or high quality equities. Monetary Metals is a gold investment company that unlocks the productivity of gold by offering a yield on gold paid in gold. Monetary Metals delivers interest on gold through the company's gold fixed income investments, which aim to provide a fixed return with low risk of loss. This provides investors exposure to gold's unique attributes, plus a real yield that grows your total of gold ounces held. To learn more about Monetary Metals and their innovative investment products, see the link in the video description. If you enjoyed this video content, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss our next video. If you have 100K of retirement savings to protect and want to take advantage of the best gold prices, see the link in the video description to sign up for the free Gold and Silver Web Conference hosted by Augusta Precious Metals. Thank you for watching.